So Nick, as, as you and I are recording this, there's still a lot to do in December. So before we get into the other and more broader topics, I think it's important to discuss, okay, what is our game plan from now till the end of the month? Because this is still a critically important time of year. Okay. And we are still in the throes of the buying season. So give us, give us some color on that. Yeah, absolutely. So basically every day from now through December 24th is like, you know, maximum attack on trying to get customers, you know, across the finish line, you know? So the way that, the way that I think about it is promoting different pieces, promoting different media types, you know, promoting gift cards, the gift cards should probably be close to, you know, uh, the, the 22nd, 23rd, like when you're getting to that end, uh, if you're a late shopper like me, a late Christmas shopper, I'm looking for those things, right? I like to get my wife something. I don't know what piece I want, you know, I want, she might want, but I know she likes this artist. So I'm just going to get the gift card. You just simplified my decision, right? So taking your pieces and your offering, your product offering, and by that, I don't mean a 2D image, you know, that you post to social media and that you email out, right? Show people the actual product that they're going to hang on the wall or, you know, whatever it is and, and get that out every day so that they might be like, that's the one I'm going to get, right? That's the piece. That's the product I'm going to get. And so revealing that and being as aggressive as possible in whatever type of incentive you want to offer, right? Like whether it's a discount or free shipping or a two for one, whatever discount it is, doesn't matter. But this is when people's wallets are still out and it's basically, you know, going to run all the way up till, till and through December 24th. So you should be marketing even on that last day. Hey, last, last minute shoppers, I've got something for you. Here's a gift card, you know, that you can get for your significant other. It's good for anything on my site, you know, or in my store, in my gallery, and you're good to go. So there's, so it's maximum aggressiveness right there. Then you enjoy your Christmas. If you celebrate Christmas, you know, and then the end of the year sale is the one that closes out the year, right? So yep. you have an end of year promotion. Um, you can, you can call it like I'm getting rid of inventory. You can call it really anything that you want, but you, you should have an end of year sale. The psychology around the end of year sale is very strong. People, you know, um, they're ending the year. They've got tax write-offs. They got this, they got that. Um, and you know, Christmas cash, Christmas cash. Exactly. You got an office. Okay. This is the time I'm going to you know, I'm going to, I'm going to furnish the office. So I'm going to get art. I'm going to get furniture, whatever it is. This is your last chance to like get, keep this, this December holiday, you know, purchasing mentality and close it out. You definitely don't want to miss that. So it's every day from here through the 24th, you know, maybe a little break on Christmas and then the end of year sale through the 31st. And then we're getting into January. I think I think that's the most important way to say it, and I wouldn't even say it till the twenty fourth. I it, I think the twenty fourth is a trap, and I think you got to let that go. We got to let that go. It 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 really is just the buying season till the end of the year, and and what it represents is it represents a time when more money is being spent, when the wallets are out. It's it, it it's the most important time of year to be selling art. Period. And I think a, a trap that we ourselves have fallen into too is this expectation that somehow. You have to you have to get everything done before the drop dead date ship for Christmas, right? And the trap there is falling into the thought that art and photography is somehow like all the rest of the consumer products that end up under a tree or end up in a stocking, and they don't. They qualify to it in a certain extent, but I don't know if you're aware of this artist. There, uh, there's this Southwestern artist. He's he's rapidly becoming one of the biggest of that generation. His name's Mark Maggiore or Maggiore, whatever. I'm terrible at pronouncing his names, but what was interesting is this guy, you know. He, like I said, he's got to be one of the biggest artists in the entire world at this point. He has a sale right around the time for Christmas. Do you know when you actually get the prints? When? Four months later. Four months later. And what he's figured out, again, you know, one one off use case because this guy's so successful and he has so much demand. But the learning that you, you take from that is the expectation is not that the art ends up underneath the tree. There are all these various different scenarios, some of which you just covered. But, okay, I took care of everyone else's Christmas shopping. Now it's my time for Christmas shopping. Okay, now I got all of that through that holiday season. Now there's everything that I've got to wrap up in these tax scenarios. There's a, a million different little things that just state that you need to stay on the gas from now till the end of the year. And as I look back at our data on, like, the last three years, like, the activity around New Year's has actually been very significant. It's actually been very significant, and those New Year sales have really captured some of the, some of those extra dollars. So, 
under no circumstances do you come off the come off the gas till the end of the year. You really you really cannot let your hair down until the New Year's Eve celebration. Correct. <laughs> I mean, it's just that that's sort of the world that we're living in now, and and that does represent new thinking on our part because for years and years and years it was like, okay, you, you have three weeks before Christmas, you know, which is the drop dead ship date, and that that's gone out the window. And these are yeah. these are important trends that you have to talk about. You know what? It's you know through experimentation on our yeah. side and understanding yeah. it's like. You know, oftentimes we we just everybody just gets in their own way, right? You have your own thinking, like, oh, the holidays are over, right? What am I normally doing on the twenty sixth, twenty seventh, right? You're you're kind of getting ready for New Year's. You're getting ready for the new, like, uh, you're 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 a little bit checked out mentally, right? Yeah. Uh, you're 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 going to try to enjoy that time, take a little break, and get ready to get going in twenty twenty four. And so you naturally want to think that everybody is doing that and doesn't care about buying anything. But you're probably buying things and I'm probably buying things mm -hmm. and we're still looking at social media. We're probably looking at it even more, right? Even yeah. more and checking email even more because we have more time on our hands, which means everybody's doing that. And these things work, right? Like people, are, you know, you're still selling all the way through the end of the year. And I hate to say it too. Like a lot of people probably don't even understand this because you're not, you're, you're way more, uh, you're on top of things than I am, but mm -hmm. I am the guy. I'm the bad husband, Pat. You know who oh, dude, buys sorry. buys yeah, the sorry. wife the wife's gift on the yeah. day before Christmas, and I print it out. I print the receipt in the email because it's not going to be there in time. Exactly because right. it's not going to be there. It might not be there, like you said, for three weeks or it, sometimes like two months. I remember I got her a pair of boots that she wanted. You know, might have been last year or the year before. It wasn't mm -hmm. coming for two months. I literally print out the thing on my printer at home and I wrap the print out. And you know, she's so excited though. She you know she loved the boots. She can't wait to get them. And so I'm like, it worked, right? But if you think that, hey, they're not going to get the prints or they, they're, you know, what, what are they going to get a gift card? How are they going to give the, their, give the gift card to their wife? They will print it out. They will show it to them. They will email it to them. There are people like me out there that will literally buy like at 9 p.m. on Christmas Eve, you know, without any idea of what I've got to buy. I just know I got to get something, right? And I got to do it tonight. So, you, you know, we got to get out of our own way and execute all the way through the end of this month. And, you know, the other thing too, it's like, you, the other thing that you can't do is if you just started your art business and, you know, you didn't have like a great Black Friday or Cyber Monday, and you're still kind of in that iteration phase of trying to get traction, all that, you have to keep going. You don't just stop, right? You're going to kill yourself if you do that. You cannot do that. So, so, so if any of you are listening to this, you got to keep going. You got to do it. It's part of the rite of passage. It's all normal. Everybody's had to gone through it, but you can't stop marketing. So that's another important point because there's a lot of people who, you know, they see all this Black Friday success and Cyber Monday and all that. And they're like, I didn't get a part of that, but you got to keep going. Yep. You got multiple different opportunities. And like Kenny Loggins says, there'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done. Not till after New Year's. Not till after New Year's. It's that time of year, Nick, when... The year's winding down, despite the fact there's still things to do in December. Inevitably, all of us start looking at 2024. How is 2024 going to be different? What are we going to do differently? What can we change? What is our game plan to ensure that we have the most successful art of photography business that we can in 2024? I'm thinking about it. Everyone else is thinking about it. I know you're thinking about it. Where do you want to begin? Well, I, what I'll say is, I mean, look at look at how much time we have here. What? We're like... You know, it's December 8th. So we're, you know, what, 20, 20 and some change days from mm -hmm. the new year. Mm -hmm. January is such an important time in the art business, you know, like for, for artists that we've seen. Um, because it's, it's the time where a lot of people get started. And it's a time when a lot of people make a change. They're looking at their 2023, you know, their 2022 looking at things. And they're like, you know what? What am I going to do differently this year? And I think that's the main mentality. Right. If you did not get the results that you wanted, January is the time to make those changes, you know, start experimenting with some different subject matter or some different things uh, and and, you know, fixing what you believe is is wrong with your business. Are you struggling with marketing? Are you struggling with this? Are you struggling with that? Like this is the time to do the, the self-reflection and and make the change. And the reason why that's so powerful is. When you see the people who have sold, who are like crushing it this last Black Friday, Cyber Monday, this this holiday season that we're in, like they they had things working 
from January through the rest of this year, Pat, they were building the right audience, you know, of, of buyers and stuff like that. They probably weren't before. Everybody's got to go from a point of not building the right audience, not having the right people following them on social media to getting to the right ones. It's not like a magical process. It is a journey, you know? And so if you're struggling with that out there, just know you're not alone. This is totally normal, but you got to keep iterating, keep experimenting. And in January is the perfect time to, to, to make those changes, you know, do the self-reflection so that the tweaks that you make are going to get you starting to build in the right direction, starting at the beginning of the year. And you've got the whole year, you know, to take advantage of all of that time to have a, a much better year and, you know, the crescendo of the holiday season sales, you know, and, and not to mention we have big art selling holidays coming up in January, February, March, like the B Valentine's day is a very big art selling holiday. There's like two weeks of marketing that you got to start doing that begins at, in like mid January, right? Cause January 15th through the end of the month, you have to get ahead of Valentine's day because the prints need to ship and get to people and all that stuff. So you actually start right there. So January's, I mean, we're, we're basically right there. Uh, and, and so that's the way that everybody wants to be thinking about it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm remiss to say this, but it's important to say it, you know, and I, I, I always go to the line, my buddy's wife, who, she, you know, she's like, you know, fitness extraordinaire always says like, summer bodies are made in winter. You, you, you got to get exercising now, right? Whether, whether you use that analogy or whether you use sort of the, you know, the farming analogy, like. That's what this business is. You know, at the beginning of the year, you're getting your land ready. You are planting your crops. You're starting to water them. You're taking care of them all year such that at the end of the year, you have this ability to harvest, right? And it's a, it's like a really important way to look at the cycle that is an art or photography business. You start at the beginning of the year, you do all of these things that are, that are very, very important. And then at the end of the year is when you harvest because you've done all that work all year long. So it's really important to have the perspective of starting off a new year, how important that is, how when you give yourself that entire year to get everything in order, get all your ducks in a row, that's when you have the ultimate level of success. And no different than the farm analogy, like you can't just show up with two weeks left to Black Friday or Cyber Monday or to Christmas and say, okay, I'm gonna have this huge business, right? You have to go into the new year looking at it saying like, okay, I realized what happened in 2023. I neglected my talent. I neglected my talent. I put it out to pasture. I did not give it the love that it needed. I did not plant the seeds. I did not water the crops. And here I am showing up at the end of the year saying, I want, I want these results, but I didn't do the work all year. Right. So I think it's, I think it's really, really important to, to, to have that lens, to look at that entire year and say, okay, I realize that if I do everything that I've got to do and I execute on the plan all year long, I'm going to have a great year, but it starts in January. It absolutely starts in January. So it becomes a very, very important time to get focused on the things that matter. Yeah. And I, I don't know about you, but I've, you know, over the years um, in running, you know, my different businesses and stuff like that, I've come to a point where I have my own process of self-reflection at the yeah. end of the year. I mean, I do it all the time. I kind of do it quarterly. I started doing it annually. Um, always like right around that December 26th, you know, that, that, that period of time, um, that week just, you know, is a good week to do it, but I just go outside, you know, go somewhere really quiet, like, you know, out in the woods or whatever it is, whatever is a good spot for you. Um, and I take a yellow pad, um, and I literally just start writing down like what went well, what didn't go well. It's really as simple as that, you know? Yeah. And, um, in the case of an art business, you know, you can be like, you, you just look at every, every big section of your business, like. My product, is my product resonating? Do I need to consider, you know, some different types of subject matter next year? Just have an honest assessment about it because, you know, your product is everything, right? Even the best marketing in the world, the best salesperson in the world, the best salesperson in a gallery in the world can't sell an unsellable product or an unmarkable product that isn't resonating with people, even if it's some of the most talented artwork you've ever seen, right? Like there's so much artwork that is so high talent that you're like, this is unbelievable, but I don't want it in my wall in my house. I just want to admire it here, you know? Yeah. And, and so you go, you know, product, you look at your audience is the problem with your audience, right? Your, your social media followers, your email list. Did you, did you spend a lot of time on audience or did you not? 
You know, is that, is that where the problem is? Do you not have the qualified buyers in there and all of that? Well, you got to address that next year. Um, and then consistent marketing. You've always got to do consistent marketing. You can never stop. Did you give up really easily? Did you just kind of make, do a couple social media posts, you know, um, or emails? Have you only been marketing for three months or six months or even a year? You know, Pat, the number of artists that we know, right, who are like, they almost gave up on marketing, had like no results. And then in six months, they get contacted by like an interior designer, you know, or, or they get like a big order and it's like a $12,000 order. And they're like, oh my goodness, I almost quit. I almost quit, you know? And, you know, you talk about this all the time, but a business has to be marketed. You, you, you make a product and you have to market it, outbound marketing, get it out on the social media channels, get it out on email. Eyeballs need to see it. You cannot stop that process. The more of that that you do, the more the odds are that you have the serendipity that somebody falls in love with one of those images. So have you been doing that? Did you do that all year? Have you, did you do it in 2022? Did you do it in 2021, right? Like this stuff takes years of compounding or did you have the mindset that you should only have to do it for one month and you should have had $10,000 in sales and quit, right? otherwise you quit, right? Yeah. You might have to fix your own mindset and your own expectations because that's not normal. The people that we know that are selling hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, if not over a half a million dollars a year, that's not how it went for them. So you can't think that, you know, why are you different? You know, why, why are you different? So self-reflection, go somewhere quiet, look at what went well in your business and look at what didn't went well. Now you've got a plan ready for January to make changes and to start the new year off fresh. Yeah. And I think for most people, it's like, look, you know, I, I, I constantly use the, the Hotel California line. And I think it's like a really, really important one. Right. And, and the Hotel California line is you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. Artists and photographers, year after year after year, try to start marketing, try to start selling. This is going to be my year. It's like the New Year's resolution. January's coming up. Perfect timing. It's like that gym membership. You sign up in January. You're going four days a week. You're on it. March rolls along. It got hard. You quit. You haven't been once. Rinse and repeat. You don't do anything for the rest of the year. And then towards the end of the year, you're like, okay, I'm motivated. I'm inspired. I'm going to do it again. You, you, you can't turn off this bug to want to be a successful artist, to want to be a successful photographer, to continue to create. It's not going away. I routinely see people in my webinars in every season of life, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, still having the same desire. And yet... They're just trying to figure out how they can get the business out there. And the reason they're trying to do that is because all the previous years and decades that they had, they gave it a shot. It got hard. They quit. But you can yep. check out any time you like, but you can never leave. So ask yourself if, if, if 2024 is your year. If it's not, it's all good. If you don't want it to be your year and you want to have a hobby, you know what that route is. It's all good. But if you're like, this is going to be my year, I'm actually going to do it. And you commit to marketing yourself consistently all year long, you're going to win. And that's, you, you just made a, you just made such an important point. It's like, if you're not looking at, even if you want this to just make you, you know, be a side business and make, you know, call it five or 10 or 15 grand a year of extra side income. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not looking at the big picture of the whole year and going, I'm going to commit to the whole year. Like you're, you're just totally like, you might as well not even get started. Right? Like you're just yep. thinking about it all wrong. Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, like they think 10 years ahead, they plan 10 years ahead. And some of the, you know, the best entrepreneurs and best business people out there talk about, you know, if you are planning long-term and you're playing the long game, you have such an advantage and you win. And it's really easy if you start thinking about it, you know, if you, if imagine the artists that are thinking right now, like I'm going to start in January and I need results by the end of February and I need this and I need that, you know, as opposed to the person that's like, okay. I realize I gotta, I gotta get my stuff out there. I might have to make some changes in my subject matter. I, I'm gonna need to market for a period of time. I might not have the right audience. I'm gonna go find that audience and I'm gonna just get better every month. I'm gonna get better, better, one step better each time. And you know, and now you've got like a realistic plan here to, to take the business somewhere in 2024, as opposed to, you know, some short stint where you're totally unoptimized, you're doing things wrong and you're not even giving yourself a chance to actually turn this into anything. Yeah. Yeah. So new year, new you, 
we're going to obviously be coming with a ton of content on, on what a new year's plan looks like and, 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 and how that all folds out. But I'm, I'm very, very excited. I'm very, Me very too. optimistic to where things are going in 2024. And I'll say, you know, more broadly that more and more commerce moved online, you know, we're still awaiting the majority of the numbers to come in from black Friday and cyber Monday and the holiday buying season. There'll be time to look at that data in January, but the percentage of transactions that are going online is really getting staggering art and photography are in on that so this is a fantastic stat line for all of us that that are trying to sell direct and want to be located wherever we want to be located and to be able to sell direct online and not have to worry about anything else not have to worry about it that, that, that it's not brick and mortar and that it's not in a retail experience so i think that part is very very exciting and i think 2024 is going to be a huge year yeah january is just this is the best time right like it's it's, it's the time to be motivated. It's the time to make the change. It's the time to improve. Uh, and uh, yeah, if, if you want to make it your year, it's just, it's, it's the perfect time. And the industry is going in your direction, right? Like the ability to build a great art business is only helping you. People are on social media all over the world. That's no longer like a, 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 a question of all age groups from top to bottom. People are on it. They are there. The fact that you can access them with your own marketing now from your own house, absolutely unbelievable. The whole world is completely changed. The whole world has changed. So it's super exciting. And every year is a new opportunity. So greatly looking forward to January. So that, I think that's a good handover to, to you know, let's unpack that a little bit because you, you've had this topic that you want to delve into that we have not talked about, not anywhere near enough, which is this notion of the asymmetry of an art business, right? You yes. know, we just talked about how all of the trends are more and more and more commerce going online. We just talked about the trends, more and more hours and more and more purchase decisions being made via social media. How, how does that apply overall to this concept of, of the asymmetry of the art business Okay, and, 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 and how you want to define that? So the, so let's look the asymmetry of an art business. This is a, you know, what is asymmetry, but basically the, the, the asymmetry means low downside risk and very high upside that the, the Delta or the difference between both of those is the asymmetry. And, um, it turns out that art businesses are very high asymmetry businesses. Okay. So let me back up for a second. I've been in the art industry for 25 years and, you know, I've seen so much happen in that period of time, like with the internet starting and e-commerce websites starting all the way to today with, you know, companies like art storefronts that are, you know, helping with all sorts of different things. And I just have to say that the art business kind of used to be a terrible business, Pat, you know, like, and when I say that, I mean, it's like, it's a shame, but we all knew it and everybody kind of knows it. And like, you know, artists that were trying to build a business in the late nineties, you know, you know what I'm talking about here. Like some people would frown upon it. You know, you'd have family members or friends that are like, oh, they're a starving artist. Like, oh, that's not, you know, they're not getting a real job or having real income and all of yeah. that. And, and why is that? Why, why was that? Why has this been the case? I call it a millennia old business problem. Like there's not many thousand plus year old business problems, mm. but the starving artist problem and like the, the lack of asymmetry in an art business, you know, historically, has been true and has been a big problem. So how was, how were things, right? Why was there a lack of asymmetry? Well, you had very high startup costs. Okay. So you, you explain if, that too. Yeah. Like, yeah. So if you, if you wanted to launch your own art gallery, right, there's no internet, right? You had to go and commit to a lease, you know, in a town and you might have a year lease or a two year lease, and you might be paying $5,000 or $10,000 a month. Instantly. Huge deposit, huge deposit. Huge deposit. Awesome. Yeah. Exactly. You'd have to build it all out too, you know, and design mm -hmm. it and all that. You're talking about big risk right there. Like your risk is through the roof. Okay. So that already crossed out the, the opportunity for the vast majority of people because they couldn't afford to do that. Okay. Yes. Not to mention, uh, you know, then you'd have to sell enough to be able to stay alive. Right. That's a really big point. Okay. Because if you have high costs, you got to sell way more to stay alive. So those odds were really stacked against you. So you had high startup costs, then you have high ongoing costs, right? So you're paying the lease every month. You have to have inventory. So if you were buying prints back then, you couldn't print on demand. You'd have to do like 
serigraphy or lithography. Um, if you weren't selling originals, you know, or, or you'd have to paint a bunch of originals if you're a, if you're a painter, but you would have to have some sort of physical inventory to take with you and to stock the gallery or to supply to other galleries or wherever you are going to sell these things. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, and then the other, the other options that you had was, you know, uh, publishers and art dealers and different things like that. But you, you also had the problem of uh, extremely limited, like local distribution. So even if you had your own gallery, you, 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 you were only really marketing to the people that are in your area. You're not marketing nationally or even statewide or so even hard local. geographically. So you, it's, so you yeah. see here, it's like the risk is even higher. The challenges are even greater. And so, um, and so that affects the upside. Okay. The amount of sales that you can get. So you've got a situation here in the past where the, the lack of asymmetry in the art business was you had very high startup costs, you had very high ongoing costs, and then you had limited upside. That doesn't sound like a great business and it wasn't a great business. And that's why, you know, the only artists that really did well are, you know, could be considered unicorns. You might as well call them unicorns. Yeah. Some of them made it through the eye of the needle and were able to get through all of that with all of that risk and breakthrough and God bless them, you know, but it was really hard. So, you know, that is reality. But today, Pat, everything has changed. And art business is one of the best businesses in terms of asymmetry that you can start. This is a really big deal uh, because I have family members, I have friends who are artists, you know, and the whole game has changed. Many of you listening to this might have a spouse who is like, you're going to be an artist. Like, are you really going to do this? You're going to quit your job or whatever it is. Don't quit your job, by the way. But, okay. but you know, it's, they, they wonder about this business just because of the baggage from the past. But everything has changed, okay? Nowadays, you can do it from home, okay? You don't need any employees. You don't need a physical gallery. You don't need to rent a space and have that ongoing cost, you know? And, and so your costs can be extremely low for a startup, right? And your ongoing costs, you've got like a website fee, you know what I mean? Like a monthly, like a couple of monthly really low fees, but in the, in the scope of, uh, in comparison to other businesses that are out there, Pat, you're, it, it's the lowest you could possibly be low, meaning, you know, it could be under a hundred dollars. It could be under 200 or $300 a month to be doing like serious stuff, right? You've got a serious website. You're doing serious marketing at this point, right? Getting your product out there in the world. And the fact that your ongoing monthly cost is that much, that little is unreal. This is unprecedented. Okay. And, and what I mean by that is number one, you have a low sales threshold in order to make that back. Okay. Because it takes time to build a business. So, you know, uh, um, you're, you're, you're going to have to, you know, work at it and invest back in the business and all that type of stuff, but you have an, an easy way to actually make that back. In addition, if you aren't making it back, okay, you have an easy way to pay for it. You save a couple of expenses. You don't go to the restaurant that month. You drive an Uber one day a month and make an extra hundred bucks, okay, to keep this business going. You're, there's easy ways to actually save money and, and, and maybe go on the sacrifice side or consult for somebody or do a custom art piece every month. That's custom for one person, a friend of yours, that'll pay you a hundred bucks or 150 bucks. There, it, it, the, the, there's no excuses to not do it these days, Pat, because yeah. just getting a little creative, like I'm talking about here, you can keep the business going forever. Now on the upside part, we have artists, you know, that are selling 500,000, $700,000 a year, you know, ones that have gotten over a million dollars of sales and they are at home. Some of them are stay at home moms and have kids and all that stuff. And they're working at it. You know, they're working at it, but you just have to step back now and understand how much things have changed. It was, and was, how amazing. None of that was possible before. None of it, it was, was possible. never possible before, but the asymmetry is through the roof. You can do this at home with the lowest bare bottom, bare bottom startup costs, right? Mm -hmm. Bare bottom, bare bottom ongoing costs that you have full control over, by the way right? You have full control. Like how much you, how much your monthly cost is, is totally in your hands. You can, nobody can tell me that they can't cover that cost, whether it's through selling or through some other means. Right. Yep. And then 
not as if that wasn't good enough on the cost side, you actually have the upside, you know, of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars of potential in this business. How many businesses actually meet that criteria, Pat? There's not very many. No, no. There's not very many at all. So the whole world has changed. There is high asymmetry in an art business. And this is a really big deal, you guys. This is a reason to do it. This is a reason to stick with it, okay? And keep going. If you are a creative, if you have a talent, if you want to like have this as a retirement or, you know, a, a, a job, you know, a, a business for you, you got to realize that like, this, like it's now at a point where it's worth it. It's worth the, the investment, the suffering, the time to put into it, even if you don't do it. Because the, 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 the reality is for, for many of us, Pat, um, and for many artists out there, what, what are your other options? What other option do you have in your life? where you have an upside like this, an unlock in your life, right? Where you could actually like have your own business that you can do from anywhere in the world and have that type of upside. Like that is a worthy endeavor. Even if you do it for five years and then you're, you're, you're done with it and you've invested in it and you know, you're giving up on it, you will look back at yourself and go, you know what? I'm so happy that I did that because the opportunity was there. This was a logical decision, you know, I couldn't make it happen or I couldn't make it happen the way I wanted to, but I am proud of myself for trying because this was one ticket that I had that was getting me out of like the rat race of like regular jobs. Your regular job does not have that type of upside. No. Okay. No, no regular jobs have that type of upside. So if you're telling me that it's not worth it to try to do this and to invest in it and to make the sacrifices and to keep on going, I don't know what you're working on. I don't know you know, uh, what you want from your life, but you've got something here now and it's real. And I just want every artist to know that. So learn that word, the asymmetry of, of the art business is extremely high and this has changed everything. Yeah. It's it, it like, it's so many different things combining at once, right? Like print on demand has played a huge role of that, right? Yes. Obviously, this and the fact that you can find an audience with just this without leaving yep. your traffic down. Massive, massive aspect of it. But, you know, it, it, it's funny as I was listening to you explain it. It's like it's sort of like the restaurant analogy. And I love the restaurant analogy. It's not the one you think of. But where we grew up, there were so many big restaurants that came, opened with a bunch of fans there, and then boom, went bust. Right. And how much money did you spend on the decor and leasing the thing? I mean, we're talking millions, right? Like the cost of entry is so expensive in starting a restaurant. Okay. And you have to hire people, you know? All, all, all of it. Okay. You live in Austin, one of the hottest towns, right? Like where I am, it's super popular. Like these new pop-up restaurants that just show up in a kitchen that's already there. All they're showing up with is their pots and pans and their recipes and their and and and, and their and proteins and, and and vegetables, right? And you can try a concept out immediately without spending a dime on anything aside from just being there for a weekend. These things are starting to pop up like 24, 48 hours. Sometimes it's yep. just one day takeover. And if it goes well, it goes again and again. And you can be a chef, an artist of a different type, have this beautiful dream and say, I know everyone's gonna like my work. This is gonna be incredible. I'm gonna give it a shot. You can show up. Have a restaurant somewhere else for 24 hours, invite everyone you know via social media and see whether or not you actually have a restaurant concept, right? That was not possible before. Not even close, right? You you, you had to take the plunge or you had to work somewhere else for years and years. Okay, we'll take it back to art. You can do the same thing. For almost no upfront cost, you can go and validate and find out whether or not you have a huge business potential. And if you have the business potential, the upside, the upside with the smallest amount of expenses is absolutely staggering. So this notion of whether or not it's a fantastic business is settled science. It is a fantastic business if you can get it to work, right? Which is the whole point of the asymmetry of it. And I don't think enough artists and photographers are fully equipped to be able to articulate that or truly understand that, right? Because I believe the perspective of, of what's possible is a motivating factor in how hard you work on getting it there, right? Like this is not, this is not, this is, the, there, there are no expenses. There is almost no need for any employees. There's almost no overhead. You're not buying commercial vehicles and renting them. You're not sending injection molds off to China uh, and getting it remade and then sending back prototypes or waiting for waiting for pallets to show up to your house that are on a container. Like the, the, the fundamentals of what is possible in this business are incredibly exciting. 
And that's th th there's a lot to say about that. And that should be an encouraging and a motivating factor to say, like, look, if I can get this thing working, do you realize what's possible? And then if I can get things working, do you realize what's possible long term? Because if, if you create this incredible piece of art, OK, and it's phenomenal and people love it, you can be selling that incredible, phenomenal piece of art for the next 30 years. That's insane. There's not insane. a lot of that going on, right? Like, you know, one of the, one of the quick tangents that I always talk about is that in the book industry, okay, and I love taking it out of the art industry. In the book industry, it's a known thing that when you get a publisher, the publisher does almost nothing for you, almost nothing. It's incumbent upon the author to do the marketing for themselves. You get a little fanfare right when the book comes out, and then it's crickets. They don't do anything. Do you want to know why that's the case in the publishing industry? Because some of the oldest books that have ever been written still are bestsellers every single solitary year. And so those publishers have so much money coming in, they quite frankly don't give a damn, right? And that same upside potential exists in art. Like if you can create some incredible pieces and they start getting traction, you have a insane time horizon. And perhaps even after you're gone where that thing can be sold. And so it's important to understand to me, this asymmetry and, and how it maps to where to, to the true potential of what you're doing, you know, like you're taking a shot, you're taking a risk, but look what is possible if things go well for you. And there are not a lot of businesses that exist. And I think, I think that's, that's, that's an important point. Know what you're it's working such an on, important point. know what you're striving towards. And in the, in, 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 in the grand scheme of things, like compared to other businesses and risk, this is, this is the lowest risk you could actually take. And yeah. if you, if you're not aware of that, you know, it, like it, it's important to know that, that the amount of money that you would be putting into this and like your ongoing costs, it's like, I can't even think of another business you could compare it to. Yeah. Like, you know, I've started five different companies, you know, you like any entrepreneur could talk about this. It's like, you've got, you got expenses, you got real commitments and expenses. And it's like, Lease, and, and if you, and if you can't, uh, yeah. And if you, if you can't make the sales, you're dead, yeah. you go out of business, but yeah. with an artist, with an art business now, Pat, you got time. The time, it's all like you now don't, you have time on your side. Okay. To, like, unlike other businesses that have higher costs, you don't have that where you've got to get sales or you're like within three, six, six months, a year, or you're dead, right? Or, like, you need more funding at that point. You got to go get investors, right? That's not the case with this. Okay. So, time is on your side. And the reality is the only reason, the only reason that, your business will fail is if you quit. That's it. Okay. Anyone, any artist these days that's giving up is quitting. It's not because they couldn't cover their ongoing costs. They could have, they could have sacrificed that one purchase. They could have gone out. They could have got a job. You know, that's why I said, keep your job, right? Yeah. Keep your job until your business is get, earning as much income as your job, right? Um, your, your startup. There's no reason to, to quit your job, like, because that will help you, you know, finance this dream that may end up happening. That might take a while. Right. And that you may not be able to put a lot of hours into that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. If you've got a full-time job and all you can do is put a little bit of time in it, it's just going to take longer, you know, but at least you're going somewhere. At least you're actually taking positive steps in a direction that might unlock some big upside and happiness in your life in the future. Right. And like I said, at least, you know, you tried and, and, and you, you, you know, you're working towards something like that. So I think like, that's a, that's just a really big point. You know, everybody that's listening to this, you have to understand, like, just don't quit. And most people probably don't know that like the, like you can, you can Google this, but, but uh, in surveys of entrepreneurs and, you know, companies that close down the, the number one reason that that uh, small businesses shut down is because the owner quits, gives up yep. and quits, yep. right? They yep. quit, actually. They, they just, they mentally can't handle the challenge. They mentally can't handle like not having instant gratification and all of that. And, uh, and so if you just go in knowing I'm not going to do that and you have a strategy financially for how to sustain yourself, and you right? Extremely gonna, low costs. Yeah, exactly. You're going to be, you're going to be like totally positioned mentally for the journey where people get off Pat is like where they think like, I've got to do this in 30 days or I'm dead. Right. Or they quit their job and now they have no income. Right. And that's a really bad decision. 
if you don't have like existing sales to leverage because you need to invest in a business in order to grow it. You can't choke it to death, you know? And if you're constantly pulling money out of the business and you have like $1,500 in sales, you know, and you're like using that for income, you're going to choke the business. It's never going to grow, you know? And so you have to figure out a way to invest in the business to get it to the level that you want it to get to. And so if you're thinking about that and you're like, okay, that changes my mindset. I'm going to have a job while I do this, or I'm going to have a part-time job or whatever it is, you know, and I'm going to, you know, understand that my ongoing costs are going to be a certain amount that I'm comfortable with. And one way or another, I'm going to find a way to cover that cost, whether it's through custom artwork, custom this, selling anything that you can, consulting, you know, or saving, you know, expenses in your own personal life. There's multiple ways to get there. There's multiple ways to get there and you can do it. There's nothing stopping anyone from doing it. And that is quite frankly, amazing. And so I think, you know, we've seen the stories are getting, um, there's, there's more of them. You're, you're starting to see way more artists that are selling hundred K plus that are hitting 500,000, 700,000. You better believe this is just going to continue and continue and continue because the ones that are sticking through it, right, Pat, you get to the other side. And there's just going to be a lot more people that can actually get there. The odds of more people getting there are now through the roof. Yeah. I mean, it's stated another way. There's not a single solitary person that can point to a successful artist or photographer that hasn't been grinding seven to 10 years. Correct. Sorry, those are just facts. Okay. Facts. Knowing, knowing those that are facts, give me the artist or photographer knowing today's asymmetry in this business. Okay. Give me the artist or photographer that's not going to quit for seven to 10 years before you give me the more talented of the two. Yep. I'll absolutely. take the one I'll, I'll take the one that's not going to quit 7 to <clears> 10. <throat> and because there is the asymmetry, because you can afford to keep your burn rate low, it's, it doesn't mean it's easy, you guys. No one's saying this is easy. You tell me what business that you can start out there that's easy to grow and make a huge success. The one doesn't exist. They're all hell. It's all a grind. You have to suffer on all of them. But with the upside potential available in this one, with the low expenses, if you can commit in your mind to grind and do the work for seven to 10 years, you will win. Correct. That's it. And let me tell you, so many quit in this one, your competition, like how you differentiate yourself from the competition, you know, it's like, it's so low. As long as you spend an hour every day reading books, you'll be one of the smartest people ever. As long as you start investing in your retirement account when you're 25, the differentiation between those that make it and don't, all you have to do is just keep showing up. That's a, that's exactly right. Just don't quit. Because everybody else, like we've, you know, we've worked with over a hundred thousand artists, the vast majority quit. Yep. They just quit. They quit in three months. They quit in one month. They quit in six months. They and then can't they all, get and then they all come back. Not. And then they all come back a year or two years or three years later. And the whole cycle repeats. The whole Rich. cycle repeats. They have the wrong expectations. They have the, you know, the whole thing is just wrong in all of these different ways. And if you simply just manage this process and don't quit, you will win. Yeah, I mean, that's we're it. Gonna have to, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to expand expand on on that in a future episode. But I think th that does a good job covering the asymmetry. Definitely. I want to talk about something that I'm sort of observing more broadly. All right, and 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 get some of your two cents on it. But I think I think we're sort of witnessing a tectonic shift in how the software industry operates, and. I have sort of a premise at a high level on this that software isn't enough anymore. Software isn't enough. And I want to talk about it through the lens, sort of the importance of office hours. Okay. And I know this needs a definition. So it's, it's, it's funny as I was starting to do my homework, I found like a, the Harvard Business Review article on this um, that was super fascinating. And Jason Fried's quoted in there, and I will throw it in the show notes for anyone that wants to read it. But what is office hours and the concept, and I'll, and I'll quote from this thing, the concept of office hours for business goes back to a universal ritual from our college days. We take classes with professors who were busy, distracted from teaching with research or in the lab or the library, and otherwise were remote and unapproachable, right? But we knew for a couple hours, at least one day a week, we could stop by their office, ask for advice, try out an idea, and get the guidance that we needed, right? And, and, and I love that definition because that's what it is. And what, what is more from this college idea of the professor is this has morphed into a digital reality 
that we see more and more software companies doing. Okay. And what's, what's been interesting is that like on our team internally, people are starting to send these various different other software providers and vendors that we use and some that we don't, that they're announcing office hours. Right. And it's, there's a reason for that. Okay. There's a reason for that. It's a huge trend. And what everyone is starting to realize is that software is not enough. Software is not enough. And, you know, you always cite the, the Shopify stat. Do you have that one at the top of your head, by the way? Do you remember what year it's from? 2021, I think. Uh, which, which one is it? The, the average duration that stores oh. last on Shopify. It was like 80 days or 70 days or something like that. 70 days. Okay. And I always, I, I always bring this up and I say like, why is that? Is that because Shopify's product was crap? You know, because it's a bad company? No, because software is not enough. If you want to be successful in today's day and age, you need to be supported. You need encouragement. You need somewhere to go to get answers. You need to be able to bounce ideas off people more experienced than you. You need to be learning from artists that are seeing the same success so you can copy it quickly or seeing success so you can copy it quickly. In short, it is too damn difficult to be successful alone on your own. It's too hard. The maths say that you will quit. And so, you know, when I, when I look at what our version of office hours has become, it's, it's really stag staggering, right? Like when we're sharing these things internally of these other companies, they're like, Hey, you know, we're going to, we're going to launch office hours. We'll see everybody Tuesday at 3 PM. Can't wait to see you. Right. And that concept's awesome. But the reason that I chuckle is because we have been at this for a long time now, like internally. And I, I looked at all these, and I'm not even sure if you're aware of all these numbers. We are now up to nine sessions a week that we are having on Zoom that we loosely call office hours, right? And we have, expand, we have plans to expand this into the new year. Not only do we have the nine sessions per week, okay? But we've also this year introduced breakout rooms. And these are just Zoom sessions inside of Zoom sessions. So what happens is if you need support uh, with your website or with Copilot, some of our other products, you can show up on this Zoom and say, hey, put me in the other Zoom. And instead of you trying, you, you being opening a ticket, or you sending an email to support, or you searching forums for how to get something done, or you searching Google for how to figure something out, or you searching YouTube for how to do something on Instagram or Facebook, you can jump into a Zoom session, talk to a human being. They can look at your screen, potentially take over control of your screen and get the problem solved, right? Get the problem solved. And, and you know, when you contemplate the typical journey out there for an artist or a photographer, okay, what do most do? they find some sort of an outfit that is going to give them a website and you sign up for the website and you pay for the website and your emotions are really high and your motivation is really high. And then you get to the end of the road, the website's done and they say, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> have, ha, have a great experience out there. I, I really hope everything works out for you. Right. And then you contemplate that. And you're on your own. And you're on your own. You're and on your own. If you contemplate that with the office hours modality, you get that same website. You're super motivated to get going. And then they say, congrats. We say congrats. And then your journey actually starts. Five days a week, nine sessions a week, you can pop in, you can get coaching, you can get mentoring, you can bounce ideas off. You can ask for your particular situation. You can say, what should I do about this? How should I approach pricing? What are people's best practices here? How do I ship internationally? Does someone have a, a, a framer shot they love? Like all of these questions that get answered by being able to go through it with community, it is just night and day, okay? It is the difference between having a hobby or a failed venture versus actually having an actual business. I would go as far to say, I think it is 10 times more as important than the website itself. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to believe that the software is becoming a commodity and everything that happens after the fact. So when I see these other businesses out there starting to offer office hours, mark my words, it is going to be a massive thing in 2024. And there is a reason for it because if you are not supported with the software, Day after day after day, your business, your results are not going to go anywhere. I don't know if you feel as strongly about that as I do, but I feel like it is fundamentally becoming one of the most important things that we offer as a business. Well, I, I, I absolutely agree because, you know, it's based on the premise that you are better off having mentors, 
you know, and, um, and surrounding yourself with people, with experts and other artists, you know, other, other professionals that, that have been there before you that, you know, can help you with the hurdle that you particularly have versus doing things completely on your own, fighting mm -hmm. every battle on your own, trying to become a marketing expert on your own. Like this, th that is what doesn't work, you know, like tr trying to be completely on your own in running a business is very flawed. And a lot of people ended up in that spot because they, they were sold a bill of goods where all you have to do is launch a website and fish are going to jump into your boat. You yeah. know, there's, there's people, there's people hold, with their credit cards waiting in their hand, just waiting to run to your website, you know, and buy them from you. Yeah. You will all learn. Everyone listening to this will all learn that that's not the way it works. And that'll never happen. You will have crickets when you launch your website, your journey has just begun. Everybody's got a website. Everybody can get a website. That's not going to, that's not the differentiator, right? Um, at the end of the day, that's going to take you to a hundred thousand or, you know, to a large number of sales. Uh, so, so, you know, there's this great saying that I always, I, I think about it a lot. Um, and I always talk about it, which is you're the average of the five closest people you surround yourself with in yep. your life. Facts. You know, that's like your friends and family, like who are they and all that. But I think in your business life, you have to a a answer the same question, right? Who are the five closest experts, you know, whether they're, they're industry experts, experts at selling art or other artists who are more successful than you, you know, who are the five people in the art business that are surrounding you the closest? Okay. If that number is like zero or one, and it's like the closest person is some, you know, uh, a friend of your spouse, who's not even in the business, who's giving you advice, you basically are like completely on your own, you know? And the fundamental problems that happen in an art business, Pat, are not, you know, uh, related to just having the, you know, a website where people can buy things from you. The problems happen on a day to day basis or on a week to week basis based on the hurdles that you as an artist specifically run into based on your art, your subject matter, your audience and the, the unique direction that your art business has to go to become successful because every art business has to go down its own path. And that is day-to-day -day hurdles and questions and, you know, issues that you have to work through and you've got to get past these things. So when you understand that that is the course of an art business, right? That's what's going to happen over a year, two, three, four, five years. Then you have to step back and ask yourself, am I properly equipped for the journey? You know? Is my strategy, is my approach of going it alone, searching Google, looking at, you know, the net latest trends in, so in social media, you know, or email marketing or how to write a subject line and how to not end up in the junk folder, you know, and, all, and you know, should I be on TikTok or Pinterest and all this different stuff? Like, you know, if you're going on all of that alone, that is a very tough path that usually doesn't work well because you, you're going to be making mistakes. You're going to be wasting time and you're not even going to know it the vast majority of the time. You're gonna be like, oh, I'm posting on social media, it doesn't work. But you might be doing everything wrong on social media. Oh, I'm sending out emails, but you might be doing everything wrong on that, you know? You might not understand where your exact problems are. So how do you solve that? How do other business owners typically solve that? You typically have other mentors or, you know, friends, consultants. Um, I know for myself, I have a whole series of mentors and consultants to help me run art storefronts and build art storefronts. I can't do it alone, you know? Yeah. And, and that's just a, a fundamental aspect of building a, any type of a business, you know, is as an entrepreneur, making sure that you're surrounded with wisdom that can help you get over hurdles. And you're not just sitting there, you know, like for, for weeks or months or years with the exact same problem that you could have gotten over. And so for me, I think that's such an important thing because with an office hours type of solution, you actually have something that's going to help you forever, right? It's not just today or tomorrow, it's forever, right? And it's, it's totally overlooked. And when like, you know, most artists are like website, 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 right? It's really, it's like, really, it's really hard to articulate is what it yeah, is. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. But like, you know, the, the things that most artists are looking at, like, I need that, I need that. They're actually looking at the completely wrong thing. You know, yeah. it's like, yes, you do need that, but there's something else that you need that you need like very deeply and you're going to need permanently going forward. Right. And it's going to make the biggest difference 
uh, in your daily decision making because you're all all your business is is the sum of your daily decisions. That's what it is, right? And your job is as as a business owner every day is to optimize your business towards perfection every single day, just one step forward every single day, you know, and that that one step forward might even be a failure where you learned to do not to do something, you know, that doesn't work, right? You yeah. just got you just got better, right? A lot of people might not have a lot of sales and they might, you know, they might be really like down on that. But like, if you look back and, and, and if I talk to them, I'd be like, well, what have you learned over the last three months or six months or a year or two years? And they're completely different people. They've learned so much about business and entrepreneurship and marketing. They're, they're, they're probably a couple tweaks away from finding the right product or the right audience. You know what I mean? And like figuring that equation out and then things just start going. And we've seen that happen all the time, you know, like where people are at it for one or two or three years, maybe even five years. And it's the sixth year where they just, it just hit everything clicked for them. They understood where they were going wrong, why their subject matter wasn't resonating, wasn't selling as much, but they learned everything about it. And then once they got the right subject matter, you know, or, or, or it clicked all of a sudden they're at a hundred thousand dollars or more in sales, you know, in that next year, it's like five years of struggle and then up into the right in that last year. Yeah. Um, we're going to continue to see it as a trend. We're going to continue to expand ours. I think it, I think it fundamentally is the difference we just got through earlier on the podcast saying what, is, what is the, the most important thing? Don't quit. Don't quit. And to the extent that, that office hours keeps you from quitting, why, why, why is that Shopify stat? So, so damning that, you know, the, 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 the website, the average website time that they lasted was less than five months because they didn't have the support because they quit right? Yep. It's everything that we're just talking about. It doesn't even matter what business you're starting. It's like, if you can just keep moving forward, every single solitary, if you're going through hell, keep going, right? If you can just get through those quitting points where everyone else quits, you got it. You yep. got it. And that's what all this hours is fundamentally. Just properly equip yourself for the journey, understand the journey that you're on and that you're going to be on and, and prioritize that, right? Yeah. So I wanted to wrap up today with a little bit of a rant and, you know, you know, things get under my skin and fire me up a little bit, but I wanted, I want, I, I'm calling this section NFT shiny objects, shortcuts and you. Okay. And I'll put, I'll put this chart up because I saw, I saw this headline on Bloomberg um, about NFTs. I thought it was worth mentioning because it said NFT trading volumes have collapsed by 97% from the January peak right? 97%. And when you see a chart like that, you go, whoa, right? Like this is, this is very rare uh, that something appears out of nowhere, spikes on a chart like it did, and then completely disappears. And the article goes on to say that like, apparently somewhere between 95 to 97% of NFTs um, that were selling for all kinds of crazy prices are now completely worthless. They're worth zero. So something like 23 million people uh, that invested in all of these things pretty essentially lost it all, right? Now, I, now I bring up, okay, and, and I, you're, you're not going to know where I'm going with this. I bring up NFT in this crash, okay, as is is one a very positive for our community, okay, because there's so many different ways to talk about NFTs, and for us in our community, it's just that our customers quit getting these damn scam messages, right? Like because they get so many of these messages. I want I want you to don't want your art as an NFT. This would look great as an NFT. Do you, you sell NFTs? Can I can I do it? If so anyone is right. saying that to you, it's a scam, you guys. Yeah, yeah it's a scam. Run, run the run. other direction. So, so that needs to be said, period. But for you and I now, we both live, love crypto. We've been in it a long time, right? We, we, we love NFTs. We purchased NFTs. We believe quite strongly in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the promise of the future that they will deliver someday. But, okay, for me, as I've studied this, it has everything to do for me with NFTs being shiny objects that completely derail artists and photographers, okay? That completely derail artists and photographers. And I believe that that the NFTs, as well as two other examples that I'm gonna give, are very, very important cautionary tales, okay? And this is where I get really fired up and I get fried out. You know, I believe one of the most valuable services that we offer for our customers at Art Storefronts and for people that listen to this podcast is when we can tell folks this is a shiny object avoid this like the plague get out of the way okay get out of the way do not get distracted by this thing 
which is really just a shiny object that is going to pull you completely off what you should be focusing on and instead stay focused where you are. And there's a lot of nuance to this. Okay. And NFTs was certainly one, like the number of people that I saw, okay. That had no bit that were not selling any art period that all of a sudden bought, opened a Coinbase account, bought crypto, figured out how to mint an NFT, put it up into OpenSea, instead of having their website address and their Instagram bio, had their OpenSea, all of that was a distraction. They didn't need to do a single solitary thing. They didn't sell any art as a result of that. They wasted a tremendous amount of time while you learned something cool. You waste a tremendous amount of time because that was a shiny object. So NFTs was a huge thing there, okay? What about the other big ones this year? Okay, well, this guy named Elon Musk bought Twitter. Twitter which was a terrible platform to sell art and photography in the first place, okay? It never worked to sell art and photography. It never has worked to sell art and photography in any measurable result whatsoever. And so what happened after Twitter got started, everyone was like, okay, this Elon Musk guy bought it. Some people liked him, some people hated him. The people that hated him were like, okay, this is gonna fail. And then everyone else said, oh my gosh, he's gutting the company, it's all gonna fail. And so first, this thing called Mastodon emerged, okay? And then secondly, what did Facebook do? Facebook copied Twitter and called it Threads. I saw, first of all, it, it, I was so happy because many customers asked us, should I go get on threads? Should I, should I go start a threads profile? I mean, I was looking at a Slack message from Meg today. She's like, hey, this threads looks really good. It looks really tightly integrated. Should I get in there? And, and Nick, I'm pulling my hair out of my head, okay? Because I'm going, I'm going, you guys, Twitter, which was crappy for selling art in the first place, has now been copied by Facebook which is also gonna be, it's crappy for selling art. And you wanna go and jump on this? What are you doing? What are you talking about? This is a shiny object. And what I've seen is multiple customers went and did it anyway, okay? And how do I know they did it? I'll tell you how I know. Because there is now a threads link on their Instagram profile. No, no. Now, Nick, what would you say the most important platform for selling art right now for, for artists and photographers, social media, Instagram. If you had a store, Nick, and it was the most valuable revenue producing store that you could have, would you inside your main real estate in, inside that store put a billboard for another store, let alone a billboard, a door for another store that sells nothing? Would you do that? Never. No. So now, you guys, I'm seeing artists and photographers on the most valuable platform, the most valuable real estate for selling art and photography, having a link to another platform that does not sell anything. Do you know how stupid that is? You, on your most valuable social media site, because you didn't want to do the work and chase the shiny object, have now put a link to somewhere that's not going to sell anything. You're taking up the most valuable real estate in your valuable store and sending it somewhere else. So it absolutely infuriates me, okay? And I needed to get that off my chest. But I think- You doing okay over there? You yeah, doing okay? I, give, give me some heart medication, okay? <laughs> I, I, I realize, though, it, it, it's, it's emblematic of a larger thing, okay? Which is- I'm doing the work over here in the right place. Let's just say for last year was Facebook and Instagram, which is gonna be for next year. I'm doing the work, I'm getting results, but it's hard and I don't wanna do it. Ooh, this new shiny object, an easier path, somewhere where I don't have to spend as much time, where I don't have to work as hard. Let me go do that, tell myself I'm busy and not get the results. Our job, your and I's job this year, like it was last year is to say, guys, these are shiny objects, avoid them like the plague, it's supposed to be difficult, the marketing you're doing over here, and stay focused and keep going. And I realize you don't, that's a huge thing that we're doing. We are saving, we are saving people hours and hours and hours of time based on the fact that one, we're good at this, and two, we have data on over 10,000 customers, so we know what is selling versus not selling. And we can make those calls. Dude, the shiny objects are cancer, and it will kill your business, and it will derail you and demotivate you, and yet all of these people immediately go and run to whatever the new it is at the consequence of actually doing the work and growing your business. Yeah. And I also think like the, the shiny objects, they come in different forms too. Always, right? always. And, it's, and it's like a, you know, uh, I think the thinking is, oh, maybe this is the reason I'm not selling as much, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I need to try this. And that's the reason I'm not selling as much. And, and, you know, the, the, the other areas that it comes in is like, we see people, they literally cannot take their fingers off their website. They are changing things every single day. 
right? And you have this great analogy, you know, whether they're like, oh, should I move my gallery, you know, this image into this gallery, into this folder, into this category on my homepage. And it's like, do you realize how insignificant what you're talking about is compared to what actually is going to do things? You know, like this is, you got to get people to your website. That's what you got to do. Your website is fine. The little tiny tweet, you're talking about like 0.001 percentages, know. you know, um, unless it's, unless your website is just like completely messed up, of course. Right. But if it is set up according to best practices, like it's done, the box is checked, but some people like some artists that, that we work with, they literally every week, they come back with questions about their website. Right. And it's like, oh my goodness, you're, you're, you know, it's been two years. Every, all you are doing is talking about the website. The website box has been checked for two years, yeah. you know, so there, sure. it's a shiny object, Pat, another one analytics, right? Okay. People sure. are like. People are like, wait a minute, you got to look at analytics. You got to look at analytics. Guys, if you oh, don't you have don't. statistically significant analytics, and if, you, if, if you're an analytics person and you don't know what that phrase means, that's a problem, okay? You yeah. need to go look it up. Statistical significance. You're looking at data from like, you get like 100 visits or 200 visits a month to your website. And then you're like, oh my gosh, is the reason that they're not checking out is because I don't have this or I don't have that or blah, blah, blah. Or my buddy told me it was confusing or my other you know, person said, I didn't understand this. And then you're just like moving in different directions. You're, 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 you know, changing things. You're, you're totally sidetracked with the wrong problem and you're falling for it. And these are all the same thing, whether it's like threads or a website thing and all of that, you're distracted from the, the, the things that you actually need to do to grow your business and the real problems or hurdles that are in your way where you, that you really need to focus on, right? Like, is my product marketable enough? Is that the reason, you know? These are the high level things that happen before the website, even before social media. Like your number of followers, your ability to build an audience is, is all gonna be based around your product, which is your art, period, yep. Yep. period. The better, the more marketable, the, the, the more that your subject matter resonates with human beings out there, the easier it is to build an audience. All of a sudden it's like, wow, like I, I can't believe all of these people signed up for my email list. It's like, yeah, you painted Jesus. That's how it works. There's 3.2 billion Christians in the world, right? Like yeah. there was a big audience for that. The rocks that you were painting or shooting had like, you know, an audience of 48, 3.2 billion versus 48. That's how it works, right? Yeah. So product and then marketing you know, to get people like on social media, email, all this different stuff to actually get people to come to your website, to actually like use your technology to, to check out is way further down the list. Right. And yeah. so, you know, the, 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 the more that you're focused on the smaller things rather than the bigger things, the more you're wasting time and the more you're falling for this shiny object syndrome. Yeah. So 2024, we will resume the battle and keeping the shiny objects off of your radar and keep, keep them off. And by the way, it's hard, isn't it? No, it's super hard. It's hard. It's hard for everyone. So this is not like a, no, it's, not, know, it's a, not, it's not the pot calling the kettle black. Last correct. time I was distracted yeah. was this morning. Trust me. So I mean, you and I are as shiny objects, you know, as, as it gets, but you, you start, you start having to catch yourself and we love catching each other too. Hey dude, yeah. that's a shiny object. You got to stop. It's yeah, a shiny it's object. No, not, no, 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 no. I think, you, and then it's yeah. like, oh yeah, you're right. You're right. What am I doing? Like yeah. go back to what's, what is working? Where are the leverage points in this business? Got to focus back there.